It's been a while since I last properly released music, and even longer since I detailed this technique of mangling sounds to create the lead instrument. Oof, yeah, best go over it again, eh? So, the basic technique is very simple. You combine two things. First, create a very short sample loop. Then, pitch that up by several octaves so it runs really fast. And then, combine that with something that mangles the sound. In this case, it is the lo-fi mat. Uh, you might know it in other programs as a bit crusher. It can do a variety of things, but the slider we're really interested in is the sample rate, which will allow us to constrain the amount of times per second that a separate point of volume will be represented. That's an accurate description, but this is just one of those things where it's much easier to understand what's going on if you hear an example. And so, if you combine the really fast sample loop with the lo-fi mat and a low sample rate, it turns this into this. And as you heard, it's not just the pitch of the notes in a scale that's completely disrespected here. One can be completely noisy, others can be of quite a firm tone, others can have a lot of harmonics, and others can be really nasty industrial grinding sounds. There really is no predictability to this at all, but it is a very nice way of generating cool sounds like this, if they're your kind of thing but this unpredictability follows on to creating riffs from them, since the variety of sounds tend not to be very compatible. One of the areas that I did find consistency in, though, was the use of octaves. A note in one octave will sound relatively similar to those in other octaves, though as you might imagine this is still highly variable. So when building riffs, I tend to use the same note with one octave panned hard to the left and another octave panned hard to the right. Of course, I do mix and match between different instruments and different notes as well to create some variety. And variety can also be created through applying effect commands. Two types in particular I found very useful is the arpeggio, it's more of a fast trill of multiple notes, which is the old school way of generating chords and the sliding of pitch up and down. Though due to the general instability of how these sounds work and making changes to them, it takes quite a bit of time to arrive at useful results. So far, this is all just stuff that I did on the previous EP. But for this one, I started experimenting with something different changing the sample rate as the song is playing. This completely changes the sounds that are generated. And in general, as the sample rate goes higher, it's much sharper. And when you get into the lower levels, then it starts to sound very Atari 2600. So you can't change it much from the initial value, but it is a great way of bringing in new sounds while still using the same instrument. And as I found, with certain notes, 
if you use a very light touch, you have access to something that's not normally possible here, which is pitch bending, or an approximation of it. And this is how I did it for the first two songs on the EP. For the third one, I still used the sample loops, but it was combined with the decimator filter in the modulation section of the sampler. And I've detailed that previously in the video for No Mercy for Tynance when it was the demo version. And check that out if you're interested. It goes into far more detail than this video does, uh, but you'll also get a look at the drums, or the old versions of them anyway, as well as the old bass, brass and forged organ instruments. So the EP's out now. If you'd like to support me, it's also available on Bandcamp. It will give you access to much higher quality versions of the audio. And in a wee while, it'll be available on the usual things, iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, etc. Cheers.